our drugs room. Um, just been injecting some joints this morning, so I'm just stocking up on my joint injection drugs. Um, so as you can see, we have quite a lot of stock in this practice and our drug bills are pretty scary each month. So so yeah, we have a lot sitting on the shelves here. There's, there's a lot of money in this just sitting on the shelves and all this is stagnant. Obviously, people need to pay the bills in order to restock the, um, the drugs cupboard. But there, um, yeah, don't underestimate how much money is sitting on the shelves in these practices. It's, it's often hundreds of thousands of dollars. The drugs bills are scarily big. They mount up very, very quickly. So, you know, you really have got to pay those drug companies, um, you know, when you bill out and keeping. It's inconvenient for you if you walk in and you can't stock your car up. So just uh, that's another thing that's very important for having people paying up front. If you can't do you, the jobs you want because the drugs you want aren't in the drugs room, then um, no, that has a big knock on effect for everyone. Them. You need to pay your drugs companies and keep them happy because there aren't many. There aren't many at all and um, yeah, you want to keep them on side. Our practices costs almost 50% of our, our costs are in staff salaries. So every time the animal's in hospital, it's being walked, the cage is being cleaned, we pay that regardless of what goes on with the animal. Um, and then blood tests and medications and things like that, we build all of those on a monthly cycle. And so those costs are coming into us constantly. And so if we don't charge for that, not only are we not making any profit, we're actually losing money because we have to pay for the blood test even if it wasn't charged for. Cash flow is really important because it, it's obviously how everyone gets paid and we pay our bills. So for most of our, our services, we're billed monthly. So the first of each month, we get a bill from our wholesalers, we get a bill from all of the electrical companies and the utilities and things like that. And so we're expected to pay them straight away. We don't get accounts longer than the end of the month with, with any of our providers. We pay our staff fortnightly, so every two weeks the staff get paid. And so if suddenly 50% of my clients didn't pay for, for six weeks, I wouldn't be able to pay my wholesalers, I wouldn't be able to pay my staff, and it gets really tight some months. So two months a year, because we pay fortnightly, we have to do three pay cycles in a month. Those months, we always experience a loss because our salary outgoing is greater than our total income. That's the sort of profit margins we're talking about in a, in a vet practice, that an extra pay cycle destroys it. And so it's really important that we're very careful about charging for what we do accurately and ensuring we collect those monies at the end. My practice that I worked in in England was very seasonal, so I worked um, at a big equine embryo transfer centre and also with um, polo ponies, so both very, very seasonal. For, so from February to October we were absolutely flat out and then it really quietened off and you see um, the, well, the income, um, basically two thirds of it disappears during the winter. Out here in Australia, it is seasonal as well. We did quite enough for a few months over the winter and then it's, we're really picking up again now. So out here, it's not, it's only for two months probably. So that doesn't have a big effect on the practice. In England, it did have a big effect on the practice and we had to, um, we actually spend a lot of time building up the winter work and moving into um, uh, other sports horse areas to try and build up the winter work so that it didn't, fall off so much over the winter. Very important um, consideration for all the bosses in the practice and if you can get on board um, as an employee as well and try and help build up the practice um, that will you know be very much appreciated I imagine and will lead to less stress in the workplace. It's important for um, practices that do have a seasonal lull to try and work out a way of dealing with that otherwise yeah, you would have problems where you couldn't pay your invoices. So what we do is we have a budget set for the whole year. So we look at, we know how much, and we always start off with staff because staff is our biggest expense. So we know how much our staff's going to be for the, the whole year or we, we estimate how much it is. And then on top of that, we have to pay for uniforms and continuing education and superannuation and sick leave and long service leave. So we estimate all of those costs for the, the staff that we think we're going to need for the next year. Then we know that we have the fixed costs. So we have rental and we have interest and other things like that. And then we have variable costs, which are cost of goods sold, so drugs and consumables and, and all of the things we use in surgery. And then we look at how much the, the practice needs to make to reinvest and to compensate everyone fairly and things like that. And that gives us a budget for how much we need to make. 